Hello, and welcome to 5 Minutes of Interoperability. Today we'll be speaking about Health Level 7 Clinical Document Architecture. So let's go ahead and get started. Health Level 7, otherwise known as HL7 International, is a leading standards development organization for medical data interoperability standards worldwide. It has three primary families of its products or its standards that it develops. Those include HL7 v2 messaging, HL7 clinical document architecture or CDA, and HL7 fast healthcare interoperability resources or FHIR. Today we'll be focused on the CDA standard, which was last published in 2010. And over the past 15 years, it's been actively used by many nations globally to create clinical documents, patient summaries, and other types of reports for sharing medical data. So what is the Clinical Document Architecture, or CDA? Well, let's talk about some key attributes. It is an XML or extensible markup language format based upon a relatively complex information model. That information model is known as the RIM or Reference Inform Information Model developed by HL7. It has become the primary standard for both the United States and international guides to exchange patient summaries. So you'll see it very actively used billions of times annually in the United States for exchanging patient summaries. There are six dimensions that are fundamental for a clinical document. One, persistence. Two, stewardship. Three, the potential for authentication or to sign a document. Four, context. Five, wholeness. And six, human readability. We're gonna be speaking about a couple of these dimensions on our next few slides. So let's look at the structure of a CDA document. It begins with the clinical document tag. This opens up the XML document of a CDA. After the clinical document, there'll be several elements that identify the ID, code, effective time, and confidentiality. The code will tell you the type of document you're dealing with, like a continuity of care document or consult note, like we'll see in a later slide. The effective time will tell you when it was generated, and the confidentiality of a document is specified by its confidentiality code. After this, you'll see the record target. This identifies the target of a clinical document, which is generally a single patient for a care summary. This record target also contains demographic information on the patient, like their address and contact information. After this, you also may see authors and custodians and other participants that talk about who authors and maintains the document. In addition to this header information, you'll also see the structured body portion of the XML. This structured body contains all of the clinical data payload in XML format on the particular patient. This structured body is often broken up into different sections, and each one of these different sections can contain different types of information. Each section can contain one text field, which represents a human display for the purposes of readability of this information. In addition, it can contain zero, one, or more machine-readable entries. These entries are the machine-readable content that will control the coded information for that particular section. So for example, you can have a section which might be problems of the patient. The text will contain information, whether a list or a table, displaying all of the problems for a patient. And then if there are five particular problems, there would be five entries in that section, and each entry would contain the machine-readable content on one particular problem. In addition to the structured body portion of a CDA document, there can also be a non-XML body, which is used for exchanging unstructured documents, which can also be done within CDA, although not covered here. If you're interested to learn more about the clinical document architecture and all of the fields that are available within the CDA, you can go online and look at the Refined Message Information Model, or RMIM, that is a visual depiction of all the XML elements and attributes within the CDA. Here's an example XML snippet of a CDA. This is truncated, so you don't see all the sections, but we can see in this sample the XML opening tag of the clinical document, as well as some information on the type, template, ID, code, title, effective time, confidentiality, language code, set ID, version number, and also that record target. That record target contains the demographic information, such as the name and gender and birth date of the patient, as well as other information about who's treating the patient. This XML can be visualized through a transform 
that will display this information on any web page. This transform is done through a style sheet and shown here is the style sheet which is publicly available and open source by Health Level 7. The HL7 CDA standard is publicly available for download. You can go to this HL7 web link here to access the standard in a download format. But if you prefer to access it online, you can also go to the online version of the CDA standard. The CDA standard is used by hundreds of implementation guides that vary by document type, use case, region, as well as other constraints. If you want to learn more, there's a lot of opportunity to get certified, go through training courses from HL7. You can go ahead and browse the CDA example repository, and you can join us at HL7 events. These include working group meetings that occur three times annually, implementathons, connectathons. You can join weekly calls by structured documents, which is the public work groups associated with clinical documents, or also the product family management group, the CDA management group, which also meets to work on maintenance of the standard over time. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and I hope you've learned a little bit about CDA today.